this lecture is part of an online commutative algebra course and will be the last of a sequence of about eight lectures on the different types of modules there are. And this one will be about torsion free modules. It will be quite short because, frankly, there's not a lot to say about torsion free modules. So I'll just um, summarize what we've done so far. So we've defined these different sorts of modules free, which implies stably free which um, implies locally free, which implies projective, which implies stalkwise free, which um, implies flat, which is the really important one. And this implies torsion free. And this implies that it's co-primary, at least over integral domains. And what we're going to do this lecture is just quickly summarize the properties of the last two in this list. Um, so first of all, we should um, define what a torsion free module is over an integral domain. We say M is torsion free if um, X M equals naught implies x equals naught or m equals naught. Here, x is in the ring R and m is in the module M, of course. Um, so um, um, over a general ring, there are actually several slightly different definitions of torsion free in the, in the literature. Um, so one of them might be um, for a general ring, um, if x m equals naught where um, x is in r and m is in m this implies m equals naught or x is a zero divisor um, the reason for this is that if x has zero divisors then you discover that with this definition almost nothing is torsion free um, so um you don't often use torsion free modules for general rings, so you don't need to pay too much attention to this. In fact, frankly speaking, you don't often use torsion free modules even for integral domains. Um, so now we should check that flat implies torsion free. And this is quite easy because if X is not a zero divisor, This implies the sequence naught goes to R, goes to R, goes to R over X, R goes to naught, where this is multiplication by X is exact. And if M is flat, we can tensor this and still get an exact sequence. So we get naught goes to M, goes to X, M is exact. We don't worry about the right hand part of this. So, um, um, X is not a zero divisor on the module M, so M is torsion free. Um, on the other hand, um, there, there are many examples of torsion free modules that are not flat. Well, um, first of all, um, over, inter over principal ideal domains, we can't do this. So, so let's just remark that over a principal ideal domain, torsion free is the same as flat. Um, and this is probably the only reason why people use torsion free modules at all. You quite often use them over principal ideal domains. And there they have the advantage that torsion free is a little bit easier to define than flatness. But uh, it turns out that you know, you, you, you may as well just forget about torsion freeness and use flatness because flatness works nicely over other rings. Um, the fact that over principal ideal domains, torsion free um, modules are flat follows from the fact that M is flat if and only if the M tensed with I is a submodule of M for all ideals I. 
This works for any ring, not necessarily a principal ideal domain. And if it's a principal ideal domain, then any ideal is principal. So, so torsion freeness implies this property. Actually, this is also true for Dedekind domains. Torsion free also implies flatness. Um, anyway, um, got a bit sidetracked. We, we're really trying to find an example of a module that's torsion free but not flat. Um, and um, the simplest example of this is you take the ideal to be um, generated by x and y in the ring of polynomials over x and y. And then i is torsion free, but not flat. So to t, it's, it's obviously torsion free. To see it's not flat, you can either cheat and note it that tor one of i with um, k is not zero. And this is cheating a bit because we haven't actually defined tor groups or calculated them, but in a few lectures time, we'll be checking this. Or you can just check directly that if you take the exact sequence, naught goes to i goes to k, x, y, and you tensor it with i, this is um, you get i tensor i goes to um, um, i, this is not exact. Um, but to do this, you have to calculate i tensor i, which I'm feeling too lazy to do just at the moment. Um, so, um, well, last time we, we showed that over local rings, things like flatness and projectiveness and so on were all the same. So you could ask, um, is a torsion-free module over a flat ring? So is a torsion-free module over a local ring also flat? And the answer is no. Um, we can take an example with R local of, of, of a ring that's of a module that's torsion free but not flat. And here we just sort of do almost exactly the same as this. We just take R to be the ring of formal power series um, over a field instead of the polynomial ring. And again, we take I to be X, Y. And then the ideal is torsion free but not flat. So, so um, um, torsion free doesn't behave all that nicely, even for local rings. Um, I'll just finish off by um, commenting on the relation between um, torsion free um, and co primary, um, at least over integral domains. So you recall that um, co primary means that there's only one associated prime. And an associated prime is a prime that's the annihilator of some element m um, in the module. And if the module is torsion free, then the annihilator of any um, um, non zero element is always just zero. So, so the only um, associated prime is zero. So, torsion free implies co primary over integral domains. Um, co-primary does not imply torsion free. And this is very easy. We can just take the module M to be Z modulo 2Z and the ring R to be the integer Z. And this obviously isn't torsion free and it obviously is co-primary because the only associated prime is two. Okay, um, so that's enough about torsion free modules. Um, so far in these lectures, I've been um, regularly postponing proving various things on grounds that'd be a lot easier once we've done homological algebra and defined torsion groups. So next lecture, I'm going to start um, several lectures on an introduction to homological algebra, where we will um, um, fill in all these missing details I've been postponing.